Hello friends and welcome back to Self Engineer channel. In this session we are going to discuss simple vapor compression cycle. While studying refrigeration and air conditioning, we come across various refrigerating cycles like air refrigeration cycle, vapor absorption refrigeration cycle and vapor compression refrigeration cycle. In these cycles, the most important is vapor compression cycle which is also called as VCR cycle. So let us discuss how this cycle works. First of all, let us see the basic components of the cycle. There are basically four components, compressor, condenser, expansion device and evaporator. The compressor may be reciprocating compressor, scroll compressor or centrifugal compressor. The function of compressor is to compress refrigerant vapor from low pressure to high pressure. The condenser is nothing but a heat exchanger. It is usually fin tube type heat exchanger or in case of chillers it may be shell and tube type of heat exchanger. And the function of condenser is to condense the refrigerant vapors coming from compressor into liquid. Third one is expansion wall or expansion device. It may be thermostatic expansion wall or a capillary tube or a modern electronic expansion wall. The function of expansion device is to throttle the high pressure liquid refrigerant to low pressure at evaporator. Evaporator is another heat exchanger similar to condenser which may be fin tube type heat exchanger or shell and tube type of heat exchanger. So let us discuss the processes involved in VCR cycle. The first process is 1 to 2 compression. In this process, the refrigerant vapors coming from evaporator are compressed in compressor to high pressure vapors. These refrigerant vapors are then condensed in the process of condensation which is shown from 2 to 3. In this process, the refrigerant is condensed in the condenser and the refrigerant releases its heat to the, con to the cooling media which may be cooling water or air. By losing heat to this cooling media, the refrigerant get condensed in condenser. This liquid refrigerant is then throttled through the expansion wall which is the process of expansion shown from 3 to 4. The refrigerant is throttled. This refrigerant which is throttled at low pressure in evaporator. At such a low pressure, this liquid refrigerant starts to evaporate. It evaporates by absorbing latent heat of evaporation from the surrounding or the space which is to be cooled. By absorbing heat from the space, this refrigerant evaporates and converts into vapor form. These vapor vapors of refrigerant are then again passed to compressor and in this way the cycle completes. So this is simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Let us see how this cycle can be denoted on various thermodynamic charts. The first one is PV chart. So the VCR cycle is shown on pressure and specific volume chart as shown in slide. You can see the process 1 to 2 is a compression process in which the refrigerant is compressed and its specific volume decreases whereas its pressure increases from P1 to P2. Then this refrigerant at high pressure at such high pressure is condensed in condenser which is shown by the process 2 to 3. This refrigerant then expands through the expansion wall which is shown by process 3 to 4. And the refrigerant is then evaporated in evaporator at constant pressure which is shown by the process 4 to 1. The same vapor compression refrigeration cycle on TS chart can be shown in the next slide. Here on horizontal there is enthalpy and on vertical axis there is temperature. The process 1 to 2 shows the compression. The cycle which we are discussing is theoretical cycle. So the compression is assumed to be isentropic compression. Hence the 
process of compression is shown as a vertical line from 1 to 2. At state 2, the refrigerant vapor is in superheated stage. Such superheated refrigerant is then cooled sensibly to saturation temperature first in condenser and after sensible cooling, the refrigerant starts to condense in the condenser. Such saturated liquid refrigerant is then throttled through the expansion wall which is shown on the graph by the process 3 to 4 and the process 4 to 1 is evaporation of refrigerant at constant temperature. The same vapor compression cycle on pH chart can be shown in the next slide. Here the specific enthalpy is on is plotted on horizontal axis and pressure is plotted on vertical axis. The same four processes are shown in the in the graph in front of you. Process 1 to 2 is compression process where pressure increases and work is done on refrigerant so enthalpy of refrigerant also increases. From 2 to 3 is condensation process where the refrigerant condenses at constant pressure. From 3 to 4 is throttling process. Throttling is isenthalpic process so it is shown as a vertical line from 3 to 4 and 4 to 1 will be constant pressure evaporation of refrigerant in evaporator. So in this way vapor compression cycle can be shown on variety of thermodynamic charts. Let us discuss the COP of vapor compression refrigeration cycle. COP of a refrigeration cycle can be calculated as ratio of refrigeration effect to the compression work. COP can be calculated by using pH charts. For variety of refrigerants, pH charts are available, readily available in market. The pH chart can be shown in the slide. Here the refrigeration effect happens in the evaporator in the process 4 to 1 and the refrigeration effect can be calculated by calculating the change in enthalpy in this process which is H1 minus H4 whereas the compression work happens in the process 1 to 2 and the work of compression can be calculated by calculating the change in enthalpy in that process which is equal to H2 minus H1. So by calculating these enthalpy at these specific stage steps. So while solving numericals on vapor compression refrigeration cycle, we need to calculate these enthalpies from the given data in the numerical itself. Now let us discuss the advantages of vapor compression cycle. Vapor compression cycle has good coefficient of performance. A fine air conditioning system has a COP around 3.5 which is a great value. Vapor compression cycles have low running cost and since the system is under pressure, these systems are usually compact. Hence, they are widely used in automotive applications as well. Now, let us see what are the disadvantages of VCR cycle. The first one is VCR cycle has high initial cost. Yes, there are number of heat exchangers and compressor. Hence, the system has high initial cost. Since the system is under pressure, there is issue of leakage of refrigerant into the environment which may create environmental problems and health hazards or explosive as well. Since there is compressor and which has moving parts, it has higher maintenance since there is more wear and tear. So these are advantages and disadvantages. Let us see what are the applications of vapor compression cycle. Vapor compression cycle finds variety of applications in real life like domestic refrigerator, split air conditionings for house, commercial VRF systems, industrial refrigeration systems, commercial chillers and this is cold storage. VCR is also used for ice plants and automotive air conditioning systems. So this is about VCR, theoretical VCR cycle. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, share. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.